So now we have a music teachment I met from uh, in the moderator's uh, course. So we had a uh, four months quite demanding uh, course. Uh, he's a music teacher and he's going to talk about do you speak music? I'm really looking forward to seeing what this is about. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, uh, uh, I can't see my presentation. Shall I do anything? You can see it on your uh, left, no? No, it says coffee break until you start. You can't, I think it says do you speak music now. You can't see, I don't know about the others, let me. Can you see do you speak music, the others? Because you can turn the slides by yourself if you go up there. No, you can't do it. Why? Because I can do it. I can see it. Okay, and the Manuel is here. Can you, you can't see why the slides that I'm uh, changing? No. No, why do I get that? No, no, no. Why, why, why? Give me a minute. Seems that the copy is longer. Now. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it should not be like that. It's very strange. Let me try to upload it again. Sorry for that. But it's technology. I think we cannot trust the people all the time. If it doesn't work, I will just share my screen and... Or you have your presentation in the front, so you can also share your screen until I see what's happening here. Can you do that? One second. I have to look for it. No. I'm just trying to upload again all the presentations to see if it works now. Take place in Barcelona next October. Um, that's everything I wanted to introduce to you. Thank you for your attention. And here you have my contact if you want anything. And of course, here you have all the links that I have presented today the EMP portfolio. This incredible, incredible box is a great tool to practice rhythms. Uh, the links to the courses. These are the videos of our e-tuning project, Let's Speak Music. And the videos of us teachers, teachers having fun practicing all these activities. Thank you. So, Thank you very much. what I'm supposed to do now. Stop sharing to your screen. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm trying. You just have to go up, that says you... Okay, yeah, 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 sure. On the middle of the screen. There is a small thing that we... Done. Okay, great. So I suppose you can still not see uh, the presentation, right? Okay. Can you see that? No. I'm taking the slides. No, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know why, <laughs> why it happened, really. Uh, but I have already asked Manuela if she can use and share the screen. Just give me a second to pass the ball to Manuela. And first, take care of the presenter. So, Manuela, your microphone, first of all, is on and I'm just scrolling up to change the role to presenter. Can you hear me? Yes. So I have to share my desktop. Yes. You can see it. Give a moment because it takes some time. Yes, we can. Okay, can I start? Yes, of course. Okay, so um, my name is Emanuela. I teach English in a secondary school in Sicily. And uh, I would like to focus your attention on the setting of a training project into curricular and everyday life in a, in a school. So um, this presentation is about a training project which very, was very successful. This was our starting point. And it was a project on European citizenship which gave us the input 
to go on with our activities among the students. The students have been very clever in learning about European citizenship, European rules, European foundation, the statute of European Union. The learned were very enthusiastic about this. And they compared uh, in this training project in their project partners, uh, European institution and what uh, can be to be a European nowadays, a European student. And so there was a spin-off training project coming out, which we carried on with a Dutch school and through a Dutch school with a U.S. school, because we wanted to compare what is to be a European student, what is to be a U.S. student. So we had the different points of view. And this was uh, in to, to uh, implement our knowledge about European citizenship, about European, being European, about European rules, European opportunities. In fact, from this, uh, there was, uh, from some lessons in Europe, there was another spin-off which was carried on among the students and teachers, and uh, also parents. We planned the lesson in Europe, and we wanted to use the attention the fact that Carini, the city where the school is and where our students live, is really in Europe, is not set aside. So we had planning lessons for the parents. Um, the parents were um, met in a day of school in a very different rooms in our classes, and they were the learners and the students became the teachers and was a very successful experience in which the students um, put all their knowledge of the competencies which they acquired through the training project in PowerPoint presentations and uh, posters on the European futures. They began showing this way teachers and the learner were the parents. Um, students, in this teachers, you can see the students work in different classes uh, with parents as uh, attendants. And the main teachers we used our work on were European Union, its foundation, the member nations, the main dates in, in European Union history, the chief European Union institution, the task of these institutions, the languages uh, uh, that are spoken in Europe, the Eurozone, and then the students open with their parents a debate, an open debate. What is to be, uh, what does it mean to be a European citizen now? Um, they also explain that to their parents the opportunities European funds uh, can give uh, to youth and workers to implement their education, the knowledge, the competencies also in the job world. And then there was another open discussion which the students lead it um, among the parents. It doesn't work a while in Europe nowadays. It was a discussion which was made last year during the, um, before the period of the European election in 2015. And it was very challenging this kind of um, of, um, of the workshops because we could uh, have the um, different points of view from the students, from young people, from the parents, from the relatives, and also from the grandparents because we love the grandparents too. And then after the workshop, we uh, split the, the students and their parents in different uh, um, different rooms where they worked all together in a cooperation way uh, to create posters on Europe values. And this image you can see parents and the students, they work together, they're creating together in our arts lab a poster and the final result is one of the final results is this. Because what we, um, what came out from this kind of workshops was that Europe is unity in diversity, not only unity in diversity because different cultures, different people, people from uh, different nations, but also because there are different generations working together with different uh, points of view, but with a unique goal that is to be unique. And the final consideration came over, uh, are the students uh, setting up the, the final discussions, are uh, that uh, Europe is, uh, is a great chance 
for me, and for me means for me the students, for me the parents, for me the workers, the relatives. And this was a starting point because we carried on another two workshops on European values after that, always with um, the cooperation of the students. And also, this is very important, we had, uh, um, not only we experimented the flip of the classroom workshop in which students are learners and students are teachers and learners are parents, but also other teachers involved, because not only we loved all the teachers which were um, referring to the Department of Foreign Language and Interculture, which is now our institute, but also we involved the, the, project, the um, reference for European projects, teachers, and uh, art teachers, because they gave us, they helped us to build the, um, the final posters of these, uh, these days. Um, this is for the first uh, PowerPoint. Um, can I go to the others or the something? I go to the other. Yeah, I don't know if they, they I just read the comments that uh, they like the fact that we engage the parents in the project. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So if there are no questions, so at the moment we, you can go on with the second one and we can see if there are more questions at the end. Okay? Okay. okay. So the second one is here. Okay. Um, can you see it? It's uh, on uh, um, memories on the World War First. It was uh, the hint was uh, the fact that um, last year November, around November, there was the celebration of uh, uh, 100 years uh, from the start, 100 years from the start of World War I. There was a lot of celebration around the world, uh, celebration of memory of, um, for these events, and um, we took the hint from an um, intriguing project on the World War I memories, um, which we tried to do, we collect in original documents. So, um, there was a, this project was uh, carried on initially by an Italian and a French school. It was called Memoir Pioteria di Vie Quotidienne pendant la Première Guerre Mondiale. And uh, it was uh, a comparison uh, among the lives of uh, soldiers, French soldiers and Italian soldiers during World War II. And this project uh, needed implementation, and so to add uh, the content, we started in our class this involving two classes of third in India, which is like a ninth grade, European ninth grade, to add content, and um, we tried to do lessons on um, real testimonials, both in history and both in English language, uh, so we involved the two different teachers, history teachers and English teachers. The one up phase was the introduction of the theme to the students, the dates of the World War I, research on the web with the main events involving Great Britain, France and Italy. And uh, we read and listened to read the uh, documents on the outbreak of war, this one that uh, we took from the British Council website. And uh, we discussed uh, about the images we saw in this PowerPoint, and uh, and we focused our attention uh, on the feelings uh, rising uh, during the outbreak of the war, and the, the, the kind of war which uh, became after, which was the daily, which was the trenches, life in the trenches, because it was a particular war, and so we focused our attention on this. And to do this, uh, we focused our attention on um, original texts. So we read and we listened to original texts from BBC um, website, in which there were historical testimonials in original language about the outbreak of war. There were the um, survivors of this war um, told about uh, what they felt when they learned uh, yeah, about the outbreak of war. And so we tried to give the students an approach to history through real testimonials and documents. And so we made 
this research through uh, this kind of um, testimonials, reading original uh, text, watching original pictures, and searching for uh, memories from real testimonials, such as um, the, the monuments, the monuments um, of, uh, dedicated to soldiers that during World War I, and the church architects in Greenwell, we made a research to, to find um, parents and relatives among them. So this, in this picture, this is the monument to the soldiers fallen during the World War I in Carini, and these are the archives of the main church in Carini, where we made our research in this way. We searched for the documentation of uh, soldiers uh, who were born in Carini and died uh, in uh, many countries. In particular, we put our attention on the soldiers died in France and uh, be, uh, belonging both to Italian army and both to USA army. And we made research from these, um, these catalogs on the web and also from that names which were on the basement of the monuments. We searched for the date of baptism of this person and we tried to reveal the fatherhood of these soldiers and uh, tried to too much parents and relatives uh, in the archives, in the church archives, to be up their lives and to find other information, to recollect the blood, to trace back their lives, and also to trace back the heirs of these people. And the work is still on progress. So we did only um, this kind of research. We're going to do further research in cooperation with French partners, because we would like to have news on the soldiers that in, um, in France, so, uh, Italian soldiers that in France. And so we are exchanging documents on what we have as testimonials of this, of these soldiers. And, and we, um, we are these three schools, the Collage de la the Scuola Media Pasolini, and our school, which are doing this work of recollection. And the, the, we made also an output, a video, which is taking part in a, in a competition. We can't show you because the competition is on is ongoing. And the, um, then we have uh, some pieces of uh, interviews with the air, so look at this paper. Too much of the results we had from the, um, the data from the basement on the monuments and the data on the web, on the local newspapers, and uh, on, um, on the church archives. So, um, so that um, was, a, was a bit the documentation work has been proceeding to find the testimonials. And uh, there are still going on researches in public library in the French local cemeteries to find the names of these soldiers, of Italian soldiers, Poland in during World War the first to trace back their provenience if they were from our town, from our town or from uh, nearby surroundings. And um, we made these are images of the commemorating video in which we showed them the monuments and the the boys and the students are preparing themselves to be um, some to make it like a memorial on the death of these people that pronouncing some words about these uh, these people that and another mm -hmm. Part of the project involves a comparison with French monuments on uh, dead soldiers. This is the French monument, monument to soldiers uh, fallen in Sudan. And this is the kind of monument in Kenya. We made a comparison of uh, the structure of uh, the monument, the fact that they are used uh, uh, with marble as a uh, as, uh, main uh, uh, components of the statues. And, uh, the other hint, the, the project is still ongoing, and what is in, in really important that this is a, 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 a path towards uh, clear in um, secondary school or first grade. Because in the Italian uh, education system, um, clear that is the teaching of uh, a subject uh, which is not English in, in English, 
a foreign language. A foreign language is not compulsory in the secondary school level or where level, but a higher level is compulsory. So we're making an experimentation to reverse that. So we try to make from a cross curricular project to teaching history in English. In fact, in this, in this project, we uh, put together history, English and French, because all these things were explained, were researched, both in Italian, mother tongue, both in English, and both in French, as language of communication of the project. And this is an experiment which is very successful because students are very enthusiastic about studying history from real documents, studying history in different languages. And this is also a way to make understand that foreign language competencies are intercurricular to other competencies. And they're then not to be studied for themselves, but they can go cross over uh, the world curricula in every school, uh, particularly in Italian school. That's all I finished. Thank you, Manuela. I think it's a really interesting uh, topic and to see the, you know, the different aspects that every country has about uh, uh, this uh, war. Um, so I don't know if you have any questions. I think that we really like it and it's a nice way of being successful to approach history. Uh, so, you just need to stop uh, sharing the screen and I will press it on the top. On the top it has a, a small window. Yes, yeah, that's it. Okay. So let me see something if it works. May I ask if you can see now the slides turning? Yes, yeah, I know what was the problem. So let me go. To the one to the next one. So now we have Leah. Let me find Leah. So Leah, now you are the presenter. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. you hear me? Yes. Irene, can you hear me? Yes, Emanuela, just turn off your microphone and Leah, you can... Yeah, I should, I should be listening now. Hear me? Yes, we can. Well, so can I start my lesson? Yes. Uh, but I can't see all the PowerPoint uh, succession. Uh, this is just the, the, the beginning. You the can, first, the you first slide. Yes. Can you show me the, or, or the whole work so that I can remember the succession of the uh, the, the the lesson? You have mm -hmm. on the top it says 42, and there is an arrow next to it, so you can turn the slide as you are talking. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, uh, I, I forgot to press the arrow. Okay. Now, let me see if it works. Uh, I have seen the arrow, I'm pressing the arrow, but nothing happens. Why not? Well, th that is always the same. Is it okay now? Can you see the next one? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, planning activities. Well, first of all, I want to, to, to say hello to everyone. And um, uh, I am um, very happy to, to, to meet you on the net, uh, on the web, because uh, we have never these opportunities otherwise. Uh, and uh, I have found very interesting the last two projects, um, mainly because I was a bit late today. Yesterday evening, I came back home late from Prague after a school trip, so you, I must apologize to you for that. <laughs> well, anyway, about that. Um, well, last year, uh, we did an um, interesting uh, project uh, with the, our Romanian partners, uh, and it was mainly centered on science lesson. Actually, this uh, introduction is called uh, Science Les uh, Lesson for a Training Project. At the beginning, we planned the activities. We made arrangements uh, with our Romanian partners. Uh, 
And uh, inside uh, the big project, uh, which is called the Vivere Vi Insieme, or Living Together, which has lasted, lasted four or five years, this was the last uh, part of a big project, uh, which never changed uh, its name, but it dealt uh, with different topics, uh, topics every year. So last year it was uh, up to science lessons, uh, Living together dealt with science lessons, uh, and uh, it was mainly focused on environmental uh, problems uh, and uh, linked to our uh, health. Uh, so the student exchange was inside the project because uh, we usually went to Romania in September and they visited us in February or March. Uh, this uh, happened for two years uh, continuously up to the last uh, year because now we have another uh, partner. Um, they are the Czech school uh, from Tabor and uh, when I went to Prague uh, last week I visited the school and I met personally our uh, partners uh, and my colleague uh, Alena Yandlova and I want to take the occasion and the opportunity to greet her. She was very kind to us. Well, so uh, after the student exchange in September, they went back to Ma in March to us. Um, there was even an activity of visiting a mining site in our province and uh, finally a, a science lab. Uh, which allowed the students uh, uh, to put uh, on the card um, a few um, questions and answers to show to the partners. So I'm going to the next. Well, uh, the presentation of Equilling Project Living Together. This was our returning project, as I already told you, for five years. Uh, from the beginning, uh, we joined even a humanitarian project, uh, made, uh, mainly based on volunteering for disabled. We planned a different topic to develop every year for five years, and we take visit to each other for two years. Last year, so we decided to analyze the two aspects related to environment and health, from our eating habits to the conditions of our living places. We even, the students even drew the food pyramid, which I have not put on the screen today because otherwise it would have been too much. I have just done a few slides prepared for the PowerPoint without all the work which is behind because it is a really big work. Well, let's go on then. Um, to the next, it, it doesn't uh, go to the next. Well, living together, 2013-2014, science lessons were the basis of the last year project, which contained a few steps. First of all, Martina's project. Who is uh, Martina, or better say, who, who was Martina? Uh, she um, unfortunately died at the age of 25. She was a girl of our places, uh, and uh, now she has become a project for a lot of schools uh, here in Belluno. I am from Belluno, from Italy. We live in the mountains, and uh, unfortunately cancer is really widespread here to us, even among young people. And uh, before, uh, when there were the mines open here in our pro province, they mined uh, marble because uh, the Dolomites are mountains full of marble. And even uh, miners were affected by tumors of the lungs, cancer of the lungs, which was a great illness wi widely widespread all over our province, our territory. So our students dealt with this health problem. Martina's project told by the students. The name of this project comes from Martina, a young Italian woman who died at 25 years old for a cancer of the breast. In her will, she wished that the young people should be educated to have better care of their own health. 
so many doctors uh, of the Lions Club decided to talk about the prevention and causes of every kind of cancer to the young people like us. On nove in November, uh, this is told by a student, of course there are a few mistakes which I had not uh, corrected yet, I'm sorry, in November, my class and me went to the hospital of Belluno to listen uh, to this very interesting lesson. The doctors told us about that about 78% of cases of cancer are caused by environmental factors or wrong lifestyle. There are many examples, smoke or alcohol addiction, overweight and obesity, junk food, bad eating habits and urban pollution. Finally, they told us some ways to preserve from cancers, like uh, having balanced meals or doing sports. So, um, education to good healthy habits inside the project. Keeping to the food pyramid and observing a diet, diet as suggested by doctors, giving up uh, uh, smoking, cutting down with alcoholic drinks, even alcohol uh, is a great problem here to us because there are lots of alcohol addict people. Then keeping fit and doing exercise, respecting regular sleeping habits, doing a check up once a year with blood tests. It is very important because inadvertently, when you think that you are okay, instead a cancer can be uh, um, uh, can, can, be, can be arising in your uh, body and you don't realize it unless you do the control, the checkup. So it is very important the regular checking up of your body. Then the next, please, a student exchange in February. As I told you, there was a student exchange even last year. After the beginning of the project, our partners came to Italy in February from Romania. We provided them with a welcoming hospitality and organized visits to our place and a trip to Venice. On Thursday, the 22nd of February, we organized a visit to a mining site where lots of coal miners had died from consumption of the lungs. Let's go to the next. Finally, the science lab, a few experiments done in the science lab, whose final product was a card with the results of reactions of chemicals during the process of smoking inside our body. And linked to this activity, there was even the so-called um, science uh, um, car. There is a, a, a van that comes to the school uh, with the scientist uh, laboratory inside, and our students do lots of experiments inside this uh, van, and uh, finally uh, they enjoy even uh, trying directly, directly what uh, uh, the, the result of an experiment can be. Uh, the next, please. Uh, I beg you. Is this the last one? Yes, this is the last uh, So, yes, uh, my, my presentation is over because this, this is the final result. And uh, there are the, the students even produced a PowerPoint with the, um, the respiratory uh, system in our body, which was uh, very well uh, uh, portrayed by images uh, which uh, were um, explained uh, with the script beneath uh, where you could uh, have uh, an idea of what happens uh, in your body when you breathe uh, and when there is uh, something wrong with the lungs and the respiratory system. And that's all. Thank you very much, Lia. And it was uh, a very serious but very interesting topic that uh, especially teenagers, they have to learn many things from that. Um, I must say that uh, our colleagues uh, of science uh, in our school, uh, they keep alert uh, on uh, our students. They do lots uh, of these uh, information lessons, uh, informing lessons about uh, the dangers uh, of smoking, the dangers of drinking. Uh, there are experts uh, from outside, even doctors who come to our school, uh, even because there is, a, uh, unfortunately, a great... Uh, 
uh, consumption of drugs, uh, uh, not just in our places, but all over in Italy, everywhere. Uh, so they are kept informed and they try, we try to, to um, explain to them what things are wrong when they go out of the school? Because when they are inside our school, even the police come sometimes with the dogs to check if there is something wrong in their bags, school bags. If they have brought to school any uh, wrong, wrong stuff, you know? Do you mean what I mean? Mm. Yes, and also there is a question from Maria. Uh, were uh, different students every year involved in the project? Did you have different students every year in the last five years? Yes, in the last five years uh, we have dealt with different topics and this is a very great luck. I consider it a luck because it is enriching for all of us. The first year I did a project uh, on uh, society, the family, the kinds of family, and the services which our town offers uh, to face the difficulties of young people who can't marry because they don't have money. They don't have the money to pay, uh, to go, to, to take, to bring their, their um, children to the nursery schools. So our town hall uh, did uh, some campaigns uh, to allow the young couples who are not married or even if they are married, to meet, uh, to match their, uh, their needs uh, for the family. Then uh, I did another project always with the Romanians uh, and the disabled inside. Uh, there was the practice inside of the disabled house in Romania and our students were brought there and they did uh, some volunteering activities. Uh, then I dealt with religion, orthodoxy and Catholicism, which I, which I presented last year for the conference. Do you remember, Irene? Yes, I do. Yes. Uh, then uh, I dealt with the science laboratory. I dealt with history and geography. And uh, this year, uh, with the Czech school, uh, we are treating the Middle Ages. Uh, it is um, a cross-curricular uh, um, project, uh, um, which mainly deals with history and literature, because uh, we have examined the main... Uh, uh, the most important writers of uh, Italian Middle Ages, Dante Alighieri, Boccaccio, Petrarca, and uh, uh, the Romanian uh, authors, uh, even uh, painters, uh, Muha, for instance. And uh, now we um, have been to Romania, and uh, uh, sorry, to Czech Republic, and uh, we visited uh, uh, the Contemporary Art Museum, where even uh, uh, paintings uh, by Mucha are uh, presented, which are inspired, take inspiration from the Middle Ages. So every year I renovate uh, the, the topics. Uh, for five years I had uh, the same partners, and now I have changed uh, the partner, and they are uh, the, the school from Tabor in uh, the Czech Republic. That's really great. So now we know uh, what uh, we would expect from you for the third conference next year. Thank uh, you. Thank you to all of you. Bye, Ren. I see you another time. I, I unfortunately I can't wait until the end of today because I have other uh, important things to do. Even if it is very important and very interesting, I appreciate all the work 